Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, good afternoon. And thank you for joining us for our Lunch and Learn. My name is Steve Cannon. I'm your Vice President of Member Development. Uh, before we have the opportunity to uh, meet our speaker today, I would first like to uh, give a thank you to our annual sponsors of our Lunch and Learn series, Car Riggs and Ingram. Uh, Car Riggs and Ingrams is one of the fastest growing and top 25 accounting firms in our country. Uh, they have a great office right here in Gainesville, Florida. And they specialize in not just business, and audits, but also personal taxes. So keeping up with tax laws these days can be very uh, challenging for us as individuals when we're busy with our family and business lives. So car, rig and, car rigs and engrams can do that for you. Uh, they'll be happy to look at your, your papers, your documents, and give you a free consultation. So if you need some advice on your personal or business taxes, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to car rigs and engram. And with that, I'd like to introduce our speaker, um, I had the opportunity to meet uh, Virginia McCool uh, five years ago when we were going through Leadership Gainesville together. Go red, right? <laughs> um, Ginny has nearly 10 years experience in commercial real estate and business marketing and has combined and contributed to the success and effective marketing efforts of many clients here in Gainesville. Utilizing her experience, Ginny has started her own consulting and marketing company, Impact Hive, and she started that earlier this year in January, 2020. She also started a professional development group back in 2016 uh, called Talking Heads GNB. And Ginny has also just stepped down as president of the Leadership Gainesville Alumni Association. So she's very engaged with our community. I would like you to please uh, welcome our special guest today, Virginia McCool. Ginny, take it away. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, sharing my screen for you all. Hopefully we won't have any issues there. All right, so let's get started. Um, first of all, uh, today's topic is marketing refocus, bigger picture thinking. Um, first and foremost, wanted to thank you all for attending. I know we're all overwhelmed by endless Zoom meetings, but thank you to the Chamber for having me. Thank you to our amazing sponsors and thank you to everyone who, who showed up here today. Um, I'm gonna to go through the presentation here. Um, if you have questions, there's a there's both a chat box and a Q&A box down at the bottom of your screen. If you could uh, try to load your questions in the Q&A box, I'll go through those at the end of the presentation. So feel free to post in there along the way if something pops into mind and we'll sift through those at the end here. But Thank you all again. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. As Steve kind of mentioned a little bit about me, my biggest um, professional experience was at Front Street Commercial Real Estate Group. Started there in 2011 and it was a fantastic way for me to kind of get exposure to a lot of different industries because we offered brokerage, landlord rep, tenant rep, property management, and towards the end, we offered insurance as well. So um, it was really great to kind of have that vast exposure. We were a boutique local firm. And then at the beginning of 2019, we uh, were acquired by Avis & Young, which is a global uh, commercial real estate firm. So to get that corporate experience and that whole rainbow, um, you know, both, both ends of the spectrum, I found really, really valuable. And it kind of contributed to a lot of what I'll be sharing with you today. Um, as Steve kind of mentioned, also co-founded Talking Heads with Sarah Emanuel. That was a professional um, growth and development group. Sarah and I, as the marketing controllers for our company at the time, just kind of found ourselves wearing many hats and we wanted to grow and learn with people um, in the same circumstances. So we kind of set up that group. We took a, a break in 2020 because we, Sarah and I both had quite a bit going on. As Steve mentioned, um, I just passed the baton over to uh, Kevin Spellacy, who's now the new uh, board president of LGAA. Um, amazing experience there to kind of run a uh, new kind of strategy for that um, uh, for that entity. And then at the beginning of this year, great timing, I know, I went ahead and I did start my own consulting uh, and marketing company, Impact Hive. A few of my clients you can see down here below, Yoga Town Center, The Flats, uh, Campbell Spelsey Engineering, really thankful to these guys and to this communicate, community for supporting me. Um, would not have been able to do this without uh, the strong relationships in this tight knit uh, community. So everybody, by being here in Gainesville, you're already on the right track. And if you aren't a member of the chamber, 
um, I highly encourage you to do so. That's just ample opportunity for connection there. Um, so uh, this is another special guest that may or may not be appearing in today's meeting. This is my dog Paige. So if you hear her in the background, um, this was a little uh, photo series that we did our first couple of days of quarantine. And I think sums up everybody's experience pretty nicely. So, okay, so here's what we're gonna be reviewing today. I'm gonna be talking about marketing, branding and bigger picture thinking, really gonna hone in on strategy. We're gonna talk about social media and then we're also gonna dabble a little bit in content and additional best practices. Uh, I'm hoping to kind of really just get back to basics here today. I know we're all overwhelmed and kind of in this endless cycle of just doing things that we're used to doing, but it's always important to get back to that bigger picture and, and remember why we're doing what we're doing. So let's kind of start at the beginning, right? Um, everyone knows that marketing is important, but many don't quite understand what it is. Um, specifically at the beginning of my career in a smaller company at the time, you know, I wore just so many hats and that's typical of a marketing person in that role for a smaller company, right? They usually handle a multitude of responsibilities. And I'm not sure if any of you have ever actually looked up um, the definition of marketing. If you have, it's, it's, it, I encourage you to do so. It's quite interesting. I'll tell you, there are a lot of definitions, but um, even more opinions about it. But one that I found that I like the best comes from the Chartered Institute of Marketing. And, and it defines marketing as the management process, which is kind of key here. It's the management process responsible for identifying, anticipating, and then satisfying your customer's requirements profitably. Um, fundamentally, marketing is and always has been about strategic thinking, and that's gonna be the subject of our talk today. You've really gotta have a strong insight and answer into the following question, right? Basics, who are your customers? What is it that they need? What do they value? how do you connect with them? And that's that's an important thing here too, to differentiate. There's a difference between what they need and what they value, right? So how do you connect with them? How do you engage with them? How do you encourage them to invest in your product or service? But then how do you go a step further and how do you inspire them to kind of refer your products and services to others? This is a challenge that we should always be um, asking ourselves. And we can do this through a variety of ways, right? Um, a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about and referencing today speak to that strategy component, but it touches on a lot of different things, right? Advertising, public relations, we're going to touch on social media branding and digital today, but um, oftentimes there's confusion about branding too, right? Um, so at the beginning of a company, maybe when they're smaller, they kind of maybe think that branding starts and stops with a logo, but it's actually a lot more involved, as I'm sure a lot of you know, and way more critical than that. Um, similar to marketing, there's quite a lot of different views and opinions, um, but I kind of liked this one in essence. Branding is a reflection of your company values and what your business stands for, believes in, and why you exist, right? It is your identity. Um, and then, you know, that's, that's more commonly known, but I think this next sentence really digs in a little bit deeper into kind of where we should be thinking about our branding. It's not only what you say and what you put out there and how you put it out, but it's what people and what customers say about you, right? It's how you're perceived. And that's the part that you don't have as much control on the back end, unless you're doing it right in front uh, proactively jumping those hurdles to begin with. So make sure you keep in mind your branding is your identity. It's how you're perceived. Branding should be, um, it's the foundation of your marketing, right? So to be successful in our branding and in our marketing, we need to establish a strong brand identity. And again, we can see brand identity in a lot of different aspects. It's in our logo, of course, in the design of our collateral but it's that behavior perception, you know, it's that communication, your tone, your language, it exists in your culture, <clears throat> your behavior, and embodies your mission and your vision, right? Um, but because we're kind of trying to relate this back to content and marketing and bigger picture thinking from a digital standpoint, um, brand identity guidelines are a great place to start. So um, I know seeing the attendance list, a few of you have brand guidelines already, but if you don't, I'd highly invest, I'd highly recommend you invest the time to crafting these. We're going to go through a couple examples real quickly here. This is Tioga Town Centers. It just kind of shows you basically how logos should be applied, the different variations that you have approved for your logo to appear, minimum sizes, spacing, 
This box here on the right, what not to do, that's gonna be really important, especially as you grow your team and start to have your branding hand off your brand to other people. Maybe you're doing a big sponsorship and they're designing an ad for you. Having and giving them brand guidelines along the way are gonna save you a lot of back and forth with edits. And as you grow your team, they're gonna be able to have a quick, easy reference guide to everything that they should be focusing on. It embodies colors, it embodies applications of those logos on top of the colors, typography, um, everything front to back from your visual identity. Here is the flats real quickly. And sometimes when I kind of present the idea of establishing brand guidelines, one of the common frequently um, asked questions or kind of hesitations is, man, I can only use like seven colors. How am I supposed to create awesome content in, you know, in this box? And what we're gonna be doing today is trying to reshift your perspective on some of these things. So with brand guidelines, don't think of them as a barrier. Instead, think of them as a framework for crafting that consistent tone, a consistent message, and a consistent persona to effectively represent your brand and your product or service. Um, this is where creativity, the fun part comes in, I always say, and this is where good design, great ideas sets you apart from the rest. So clear identity is, um, brand identity is really important, right? It's a basic marketing principle that it takes seven touches before someone will take action. So you want to make that connection easy. The way I kind of big picture think of marketing is, okay, whatever this product service is, when you think of it, I want you to think of our brand. So when you think of luxury apartments, I want you to think of the flats. Um, we're going to have consistency in our brand using our brand guidelines along the way. You might scroll through our Instagram or see someone that shared something from our Instagram. Then you might hop over to your doctor's office and see an ad spread that we've done. Or you might see a collateral, a piece of flyer laying around somewhere. If we're supposed to be depending on seven touch points to make that connection, we've got to make sure that collateral speaks to each other, right? And has easy transfer. That doesn't mean you're using the same pictures in every ad. It just means that there's consistency in your collateral. Right. Um, I saw Mike Biagini go ahead and uh, comment here earlier when he signed on. He gave a talk to us at Talking Heads a little while back, and he said something I kind of always remember. Um, he referenced ADL. So we're talking about digital marketing here, but um, it's important to brand yourself outside of just your digital marketing. So ABL is, stands for always be logoed. Um, so make sure, you know, when you're around town at community events, you've got the logo or, you know, a little um, either embroidered on your shirt or a little name tag. Um, get stickers on your equipment, you know, make sure that your brand is out there too, outside of just the digital world. Um, so Campbell Spellacy, real quick, I can't take credit for his website, but here's a snapshot of that. I just signed on with him a little while back to help with some marketing and communications. And we kind of started with just the basics, right? Let's get our Facebook cover up to date. And then some of the things that we're promoting, you know, um, are cohesive in that style and tone, even, you know, from our social posts to our hiring offerings. Um, I showed you snapshots of the brand identities for both Tioga and the Flats, but without seeing the brand guidelines for Campbell's Spellacy Engineering, I'm, I'm guessing based on this collateral example, you might be able to maybe piece together what colors and what fonts are uh, most important to them. And that's kind of what we're trying to do when we're talking about consistency in digital branding. So <clears throat> let's jump into strategy. We're going to kind of wrap everything all together here, um, full circle, but Let's start with a live example. So let's just say that we have a professional service provider and let's say they are a construction company. Um, we're gonna come up with a social media content strategy for that construction company, right? And we've sat down and we've identified four social networks that make sense for us. Um, not every single platform is gonna make sense for you. Um, and before we go any further in this exercise, we're not talking about timing or frequency here. Um, this little mock strategy we're putting together is focused on content specifically. So when we're thinking about content, it's important if you choose the social platforms that you do, you need to think about a different strategy for each platform. If you're saying the same thing at the same time on all of your networks, that's not going to be the most effective way to do it, right? Um, think about why you chose the networks you did and figure out what makes most sense to you and your business, um, uh, how to utilize those. Um, if you were a professional service provider like a construction company, 
your next owner probably won't be on Facebook searching for the most reliable construction companies out there. But the examples that we just showed you with branding, it's important to be there because it's another opportunity for a touch point. So when you're thinking about your content and you're thinking about your business plan in this professional service provider example, it probably makes sense that we're going to talk about more formal stuff on LinkedIn and then maybe show a little bit more of our personality on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook's kind of in the middle. We can go both ways, but think about your content in ways that make sense to your business, right? So if we're sticking with more formal on LinkedIn, we're probably going to be talking about business industry um, types of news updates events. But maybe on Twitter and Instagram, we'll have one of our contractors, you know, show you how to make a um, concrete pottery you know bowl out of some leftover concrete that you have you know it's a way to really show your personality your culture um and in a way that makes sense for your business similarly kind of go outside of that if you take it to another level if we want to really show our strength on linkedin as a you know someone dependable and reliable maybe let's talk about this national um national issues affecting our industry and then We'll really showcase our local personality and things that others might recognize being on site here on those more um, casual uh, networks. So different ways to kind of think about your content here. For the purpose of moving forward in this exercise, let's agree that we're going to go ahead and do a mock social content strategy for Facebook. So how I typically set up my um, client meetings is we I have them fill out a worksheet. I look at the results of that worksheet to kind of see where they're at. And then I set up a kickoff call that's almost a little brainstorming strategy session to get a little bit more um, out of that time with them. So we went through this exercise. We're going ahead and moving forward. And construction company has said, you know, we want to do three things on um, social media and Facebook specifically. Our goals are to showcase our culture, highlight our services, and feature our company history. So at that point, what I do is I kind of liken them to buckets, right? I always recommend that we have three to five content buckets per social network. And then we wanna fill those buckets with things that make sense to our company, our goals, and what we're trying to achieve on that specific network. In this case, it's Facebook. So for culture, maybe we're gonna talk about things like special events that we either host or that we participated in, right? We're gonna feature our employees. Um, people connect with people. It's really important to post people. I know, tip, I'm one of them. I don't like being in pictures. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm usually behind the camera, but um, you've gotta bring out the faces behind your brand too. Um, your logo's one thing. Uh, I'm sorry, your face is behind the logo. People and your logo should be equal representations of your brand. So feature your employees, feature your team. And then celebrate online. If someone had a great anniversary or a big win, let's talk about that, right? Services, let's talk about new business, things that we've won. Let's talk about our differentiators. How are we different? Do we deliver consistently under budget and consistently under time, you know, ahead of time? Um, you know, what are those differentiators that you know that you are um, proud of and want to feature? And then what are some featured projects you have? You know, if this is an opportunity to kind of capture someone scrolling through social and, and they see that you just completed a huge project for a big entity, maybe like UF, you know, that's a great thing to talk about on social media. Um, case studies, they're proof of concept, right? So get that out there um, and showcase that. More appropriate probably for LinkedIn, but still exciting and your verbiage can change on Facebook, but and then history, we want to talk about our growth as a company. We've had a long ingrained history here. Let's talk about the story and how we got here. And then maybe let's have, again, proof of concept. What are some accolades? What are some things you've won? What are some recognition pieces that you can talk to just to kind of get additional clout there? So again, very simplistic. Um, I know we probably need to go a lot more in depth here, but for the purpose of the example, this is a good example uh, you know, of a... Um, social media content strategy. Now, it's really, really important to understand that there's a difference between strategy and tactic. Your marketing plan and your marketing strategy cannot be Facebook. Um, social media is a tactic and Facebook is a social media network. So we're kind of going way far down here, right? Let's bring it back up higher level. Other tactics that are effective in marketing are things like e-newsletters, signage and billboards, 
advertising, TV, print, radio, you know, signage, your website itself and search engine optimization and your storefront. You know, in our example of this construction company, if the building does not look good and someone comes there, you know, that's not a good representation of your brand, right? Um, so for every um, tactic you sh have, there should be intention behind it. And that should feed and speak to a higher strategy. So what does that higher strategy look like, right? We just kind of went the opposite way. How do we get back to what that big strategy is? You've got to kind of back out bigger picture and go to those foundational questions of appealing and effectively marketing your brand, right? You've got to establish what your main goal is and how you can get there. And there are multiple ways, multiple right ways, multiple wrong ways, but it's important that you go ahead and establish your main goal carve out strategic pathways to that destination, and then diversify your marketing avenues. If there was only one road back and forth to Jacksonville, that would be a very awful, crowded, busy, crazy road, right? We've got to diversify our avenues and make sure that we're headed in the right direction all to the same place. So we can use this example coming up here now as that higher level marketing strategy for that construction company, right? Let's say that we had a big strategy session and as a group, after going through all of our exercises and all of our data, we realized that driving traffic to our website is the main marketing goal. That's where we house all of our proof of concepts, our case studies. We go into detail about our services and our offerings. Our website kind of acts as this um, house of all of the different resources that people need to maybe make a better informed decision on who they want to work with. So if we establish that driving traffic to my website is the most important thing, then we've got to carve out those pathways and diversify our marketing to achieve that goal. So up here on the top, the biggest boxes in the four lane highways here, those are the biggest roadways. Those are the ways that that's where you're going to be spending the majority of your time, the majority of your effort, majority of your energy, right? So because our website is so important, we're going to really dive into making sure our website is dynamic and responsive. And we're also going to make sure that we're pouring time and energy into search engine optimization if that's how we know that our audience is typically going to be finding and landing on us. Um, we're also going to go ahead, sorry, a little out of order here. Um, existing relationships we know are really important to our industry too. Referral business, especially in real estate, um, that was a big, big thing. Um, so it's really important that you establish your priorities and funnel time and energy and efforts into that to begin with. So if we know that existing relationships are a huge part of how we get new leads. Let's make sure we have a really robust CRM. Let's make sure we're keeping up with our clients and we know everything going on and are delivering on time. Let's high level sponsor some big events to create existing networking opportunities. And let's continue, in to, let's continue to enhance those existing relationships. I think oftentimes I see companies who are growing and growing focused only on acquiring more and more. And they almost kind of seem to forget about the people that helped them get there. You know, it's really important that you use those first um, and those uh, beginning relationships and you expand on them to kind of really grow your network because those people are going to be in infiltrating, getting the word out about your company too. Um, it, again, with the diversific diversification of marketing, um, social is kind of traditional for everybody across the board, but in times that we are like now where everybody's inundated all the time, especially in an unprecedented election year, mid pandemic, a lot of people take a break from social media. So we've got to get other ways to get our audience the information they need. Um, I always have, recommend uh, direct targeting um, via e-newsletters. This can be a topic all on its own because it can be done uh, one of two ways, one can be really effective and one, one can actually be pretty damaging. So if you do it right, uh, direct targeting can be extremely beneficial, especially if you're in a professional service industry line. Um, and then maybe we'll pour some time into some traditional advertising, print, maybe radio, maybe TV, we'll see. And then non-traditional ads, not necessarily billboards, but depending on what our service line is, we've got to think outside the box and do some fun, creative stuff to be memorable. So this is kind of what a very simplistic um, higher level marketing strategy might look like. Now, 
not every business needs highway level marketing. Me, for instance, uh, with my company, I don't have um, social media right now because I'm not at that phase right just yet. Um, I've got a website and I've got a pretty strong email signature and I've buffed up my LinkedIn a bit, but I'm a little bit more up here on this existing relationship sector. That's where a majority of my time is being spent. So adjust your efforts and your budget and your time and your energy based on your actual needs. And um, those needs are gonna be achieving and accomplishing those main goals. So establish those as well. And always remember, um, marketing and branding, like we talked about when we were doing the definitions to kick us off, they should be ingrained into everything you do as a business. They're really foundational. So business owners and higher level corporate partners really elevate your marketing team members. If I had not had the ability to kind of be present in these client meetings, in the sales meetings, in the corporate meetings, in, in broker training meetings, um, I would not have been able to have that higher level, bigger picture view of the company. I wouldn't have been able to identify shifts and things that we needed to make in order to be successful. So I really encourage you to get those people involved. I was very lucky that to have such marketing minded um, business uh, owners as my leaders and my bosses. And that, that was a game changer for me. It's, it's a big, big differentiator. So um, do your best to get those people involved also something to remember a little off topic for good or bad every team member is an extension of your brand speaking back to marketing and branding being ingrained in everything so um, make sure everybody's on the same page they're a representation of your values so it's really important that everybody's kind of bought into that same common goal and mission here so I encourage teamwork sharing it pays off tenfold also remember, you know, strategies expire too. Um, something that you set up a year ago is probably not gonna still be effective. So um, target your audience, create pathways for them to easily reach you. Make sure you're engaging and captivating them with your content, but um, put energy into those existing relationships, right? As you're analyzing and tracking your metrics, study all activity generated. I think it's really easy to just kind of dive into the data and make the charts that kind of point to a growth in likes. But if we know that a growth in likes doesn't directly necessarily lead to business, if we're in that type of industry or field, we've got to make sure, okay, is the phone ringing more? If we go to an event, are people talking about things that we posted on social or do they know that we're showing up to here and that because they saw something going on, right? So get outside of just the computer screen and really study all activity that's being generated by the marketing efforts that you're making. Um, and then adjust your approach to ensure the best results for your clients and customers. That's how you're gonna build that trust with them and that's critical. Um, if you're not sure what your clients or customers want, ask them. Um, send out a survey. When you're done with a project or when you're done with a client interaction, it's a great way you know, to have that tuck point a couple of weeks later, hey, I know we wrapped up the project a week ago, but we wanna know how we can do better. We wanna know how we can improve next time, help us get there. Um, great way to kind of enhance those relationships and improve your business and your practices moving forward, right? We've already touched on social a little bit. We're gonna dig a little bit deeper here. And every time you are crafting your content, I challenge you to just stop and think for a minute, right? Because we're going back to that higher level strategy thinking. What are you posting? Why are you posting it? And most importantly, who cares? <laughs> this was a question that my boss asked me all the time and it was not, it was not in any way, you know, um, in a bad way or anything. It was, it was meant to challenge me because marketing again is always about strategic thinking. So if you are posting and talking about things that your clients don't need or value, they're not gonna hear your message and you're gonna actually disengage them from wanting to follow you anymore. So it's really important to stop and think before you post. Um, a frequently asked question that I get, especially with social media, is how much is too much to be posting, right? How much should I be posting? When should I be posting it? What should I do? Unfortunately, there is no one right answer. And this goes back to everything that we're kind of talking about. It's debatable because it depends on your market sector, it depends on your product or service, and most importantly, it depends on your audience, right? Um, how much is too much is actually the wrong question to be asking. So we're gonna strike through that right now. Um, instead of thinking about your frequency, which is that too much, we need to be thinking about the audience, how to reach them and how to keep them engaged. Um, if you are focusing on quality over quantity, 
um, that's going to pay off tenfold. We're over inundated all the time between phone and emails and phone calls and texts and social media. You know, we have to, when we do get those people's time, treat it with respect and make sure you're adding value when you can and have good quality content. Um, this is why sticking to the strategy is key and keeping the bigger picture in mind. Um, if you stick to your strategy, use your brand and your brand guidelines to drive that strategy, focus on that quality and add value to your audience, you start to establish trust, which is key. Um, ultimately, if we post good quality content in a consistent manner, which is different than frequency, right? We'll start to achieve brand loyalty from our followers. It's important to really recognize here that there is a difference between frequency and consistency. Posting two times one week, five times the next week, and then three times to catch up for the week, two weeks prior, that is not consistency. And consistency we know is the building block of trust. And that needs to extend to your marketing efforts as well, especially on social. Um, brand loyalty is built and that sparks organic reach and grassroots word of mouth, further enhancing your brand and solidifying your reputation, which is that perception that we were talking about in the branding without depending too much solely on those trends, paid ads and ever changing algorithms. Um, it's why posting for the sake of posting is not effective. It needs to feed into a higher strategy with consistent execution, both in frequency and quality. Um, I'd almost go as far to say that if you don't have time to actually dedicate to social, don't do it yet because it's gonna, I, it could bring on more harm than good. So what we're really trying to do is build up our brand, establish trust and build that loyal following. Here's kind of that rundown of that whole paragraph we just went through. Keep the bigger in picture in mind, identify and target your audience, focus on that quality over quantity, leaned on your brand guidelines to establish a strong brand identity, consistently post good quality content, add value when you can, start building trust, achieve brand loyalty, that sparks organic growth, enhances trust, builds your reputation, and it'll help with the following. Um, and then you kind of go back and start from the beginning. I have a difference in color here because I think it's really important. I was speaking to you business owners a little while back, challenging you to elevate uh, your marketing team members and, and involve them in, in the works of your business. I'm now speaking to you marketers here. If you set up a fantastic roadway and you build and carve out these new paths and you have found and created and polished this beautiful shiny vehicle, but you do not train and teach your salespeople or the rest of your team how to drive that vehicle on the pathway you've created, you're not going to go anywhere, right? So it's your job as marketing to work with your team to really show them, okay, I put together this proposal. It's really important that we start with these and say these types of things because this is how we're going to pitch our business. We start with our, let's say, differentiators and we go down the line from A, B, C, D to kind of eventually make that sale. If marketing and sales aren't working together and the team isn't working as a whole, Every, you can have the best marketing plan out there and the best vehicles to get to your goal, but no one's going to be going anywhere because no one knows how to drive. Um, so really important that you get involved with your team and really teach them how to um, kind of work with those uh, marketing tools. I think a presentation can be done alone on just um, how to speak marketing to non-marketing minded people. This kind of comes into play here. Not everybody inherently gets marketing. So make sure everyone is on the same page there. It really pays off tenfold. And then if we're talking social media, the social part of it, um, I think often seems to get lost. Communication is a two-way street, right? So engage with others. Um, no one likes only be being talked to or lectured at, even though that's what I'm doing with you guys right now. Um, we'll talk a little bit at the end, but engage with others and network on social media. Um, follow your clients, comment on their successes and wins, share their accomplishments on your page, build them up. Um, as I'm posting away for Tioga Town Center, you know, on the networks out at the public, I'm just as much in the word of mouth pages, the restaurant word of mouth pages. If someone asks what's the best pizza in town, I'm gonna tag Blue Highway. And not only that, I'm gonna 
put in a couple pictures of some of the things that are testament to their brand and their offerings. So make sure that you're getting outside of just the one way um, uh, microphone um, and really see what everybody is up to and socialize on social media uh, with other people, really important. So why do people stop following brands? And this is specific to Instagram. That B there is the highest column, right? The content is just not relevant or interesting to me anymore. And, and that is exactly where we go back and stop and think before we post. What are you posting? Why are you posting it? And who cares? If you're not speaking to what they need in value, they're not going to hear your message because it's not pertainable to them. So stop and think about it. <clears throat> okay, let's go into um, content and best practices here. Quality over quantity, your product embodies quality and your content should represent this too. Um, people wanna see and feel the value this extends online. So it needs to be engaging, enticing and welcoming, right? So if we're the flats with some of the highest rents in, in Gainesville, we need to make sure that our collateral looks up to par. Um, if, here's a, just a quick tip, if you are outsourcing your content creation, make sure you negotiate in your contract early on that you should keep the rights to that content. Um, you should own your content for utilization in other ways. Um, and I think that's something that kind of doesn't always happen. So take a quick look at that, make sure that anything that's created by you or for you is, are things that you own and can utilize moving forward. If you're not sure what type of content to create or you're kind of just running into a roadblock, a simple suggestion is to kind of just look at your marketing materials for ideas. So here's a double-sided flyer for the flats. Um, I was talking and working with the sales team, of course, and some of the property managers on place. And I was doing a little bit of research into our competition there at the flats and our competition in the immediate vicinity, although fantastic, does not have elevator access. So we all know how fun um, walking groceries up a flight of stairs is in the middle of summer in Gainesville with uh, no uh, air conditioning or anything. Um, not a lot of fun. So we've strategically put um, elevator access right at the top of our community amenities list and then made a fun social media post. Three words, right? Elevators, they're a game changer. So Look at your marketing materials for collateral and ideas. And again, if I hadn't been in touch with the sales team or you know, didn't know that some of the bigger complaints from some of the surrounding competitors were that, you know, I wouldn't have had that knowledge. Um, if, if, you're, if your sales team is running into problems or they're telling you about their struggles and obstacles, from a marketing standpoint, you can proactively hurdle those barriers through your marketing, right? But you have to have those conversations to know what's going on. And if you're working with them and you're hearing their wins and all their accomplishments, those are great to promote on social too. Um, and then we all know that creating good quality content takes a lot of time and effort. So if you're doing it, maximize that investment of your time. Put some time, energy, and effort, effort into crafting a library of evergreen content. By definition, it's always fresh and green. It's evergreen. These are things about your company products or service that won't be changing anytime soon. So, you know, this is Campbell Spellacy's reputation and it speaks to kind of their values. This, this is their value proposition and kind of what they offer as their differentiators. Um, here are their actual core values and we're spending some time on social media talking about them once a month and what those values mean to us. And then <clears throat> this one here, the phrasing, our team has served UF as a campus as a campus service engineer since 1985 and continues service to this day. Um, that's going to be green um, and fresh as long as we have that relationship with that client. So if you craft evergreen content and you post it on maybe, let's say, Facebook, you can cross promote on different social networks at a different point in time, but you can also incorporate it into your email blasts. You can integrate it into your website slideshows. You can utilize for some digital advertising. Incorporate into your slide slideshows, your pitches, your presentations, your proposals, you know, make that content you invest all this time and energy and effort into last and work for you. Um, <clears throat> thinking outside your perspective is always a good one too. I like to use this example a lot way back, uh, not way back, I mean, it seems like way back, but we had elevated our e-newsletter um, back at Front Street for real estate. And typically, uh, speaking of knowing your audience, um, typically, our 
the, the majority of our owners uh, and occupiers of real estate were of an older demographic because it typically requires additional capital for you to own or occupy real estate. And ideally, it would take you a longer time in your life to generate that capital. So we elevated the e-newsletters and we kind of came up with some call to action buttons and some links and things like that. And I noticed when we kind of elevated it to the next level, our click rate went down by about 30%. So I was talking with my team, figuring out things, speaking to some of my brokers, and we kind of realized because that audience is of that older kind of demographic, they didn't necessarily inherently understand that every image is clickable or that call to actions don't lead you to spam. What they were more comfortable clicking on is that awful underlined hyperlink text, right? <laughs> Not something as a marketer high on trends and excited about new things wants to revert back to, but you've got to get outside of your own preference and your own perspective and really put yourself in your audience issues. How can you get, deliver them the information they need and they want to get to you in a way that they're most comfortable with, right? And that's where that diversification of marketing streams comes into. And always think outside a box. This is a little bit more guerrilla marketing advertisement examples, but I like looking through these every once in a while to just kind of get inspiration for thinking big and thinking outside the box and can be really impactful if done in a creative uh, way. So when it comes to photos with our content and our social media networks, just leaning more and more towards visual. I mean, Instagram is only visual, right? Um, photos and, and really taking the time to capture those photos properly is gonna be really important too. Um, I always encourage landscape uh, to begin with. You can typically always crop a portrait orientation from a landscape photo, but that's a one-way street. You cannot go the other way. There's always exceptions to the rule, but it's always good to start in landscape and find different perspectives and angles that work. There's a reason why selfies are taken from up here. It's a little bit more flattering, right? That applies to anything that you would photograph. And if you can go a step further and instead of finding, finding the most appealing angle, find maybe an angle that no one's seen before, that's where you can really capture uh, some fantastic outstanding content. Um, angles make a huge difference with my real estate being, uh, background being in real estate. Um, I used to carry around a little checklist with me and it sounds silly, but if this is something you're doing and photographing often, have that little list because there's too many things to keep track of when you're on site. You know, make sure the blinds are open, turn on the lights, make sure the pillows and everything look good. Whatever the setting and the scene that you're capturing is, have a little checklist to make sure you're getting the stage set right to begin with. Again, good example of correcting both light and angle. Sight lines into other rooms and areas really help faces and things look better. Um, here too, I know not everyone's in real estate, but these tips and tricks can be transferred to other things. Wipe your lens. We're on the go all the time. Um, it's more apparent at night, but the worst is when you've done a shoot for a couple hours and just realize you've got a smudge in different places on your lens. It's just tough and you spend a lot more time in editing. Um, so wipe those lenses. That's a little checklist item too. Watch your reflections here. Um, it's not necessarily the traditional person caught in the reflection here. Instead, it's you know wet towels hanging around all over the place. Um, pay attention to the details in the content that you're capturing. If you are using your phone, click around, of course, and focus on both light and focus. Um, natural is best when you're taking your photos because you need to keep editing on the back end in mind. Um, always edit, too. Please don't ever not edit your photos. Um, take the couple extra minutes to do it. Um, it's gonna pay off long term. And then we've been talking about bigger picture and, and going back to you know the big picture, but if you ever hear a story, um, you connect with the details of that story. That's what makes it unique. So capture that in your content too. Think big and small, both macro and micro. Um, for uh, a platform like Instagram, that change and scale is going to be really important. So you can kind of put together almost a, a, a big collage that varies in both uh, scale and, um, you know, image uh, subject content. So with Instagram, especially visual identity is key to achieving that brand awareness. Think about though your overall composition, um, lean on your brand guidelines to get there, but Strategize your overall thread composition. I see a lot on times on Instagram, people just kind of instantly post and don't think 
about crafting your Instagram thread and, and almost viewing it as a portfolio. Those of you with a design background, you know, there should be a balance and a change. Things should speak to one another as they rotate through as well. There should be differentiation and balance between your colors, between scale, between your content types, right? Make sure you're alternating between product photos versus graphics with maybe additional context layered in and people, again, people want to see the people. So make sure you're looking at your overall Instagram composition um, and factoring that in in your planning as well. A few final thoughts, because I know I want to save a couple minutes for questions. These are just some FAQs I see all the time and I wanted to share with you guys. Um, give your audience a heads up before you go live on Facebook. I know you guys are thinking and we all are thinking about our own marketing all the time. But um, people are not necessarily just waiting uh, for you to post or do something. So tease big news, tease events, tease going live. It's good content builder. Hey, exciting news coming out. Give them a heads up so you actually get the um, leverage and the intention you want out of that. Um, investigate and pay attention to trends, but always question them. Um, if any of you have seen the 3D photos on Facebook a little while back that were everywhere all the time, there are a lot of bad examples and <laughs> not everything should be a 3D photo. So with social media networks popping up all the time and different trends and things happening, know them, pay attention to them, but really question if they are a good fit for you and your line of business. Don't plan too far ahead. Um, we went back to that don't post for the sake of posting. I think if we start mapping out a calendar and we load up you know, um, a social media scheduler with the next two months worth of posts, the thought process behind creating that content is diminished and it's gonna come out in your, um, you know, the quality of your content too. Um, it should be relevant and, and an example of what's going on right now in your world here. So I typically don't like to plan more than two weeks out as far as creating and mapping and scheduling out content because you wanna be present, you wanna be on point with what's going on with your business today. Um, and not all analytics should be treated the same. Um, your key performance indicators and the things you're tracking should change based on your service line and your industry. So um, again, make sure that you're establishing both goals and indicators to measure those goals that fit with your overall strategy and mission. Um, and pay attention to what's going on around you, right? With that professional service example, you know, again, the Facebook audience growth might not directly lead to sales, but we know in some way it leads to brand awareness. And you know, pay attention just outside of analytics, like we mentioned before. I do think that SEO, um, similar to our sponsor, right, and how uh, we introduced them at the beginning, um, tax laws change all the time. It's a lot to keep up with all on your own. I feel like SEO is a good example with that. Um, it's a profession and expertise in itself. Um, work with someone who's constantly on top of it and focused on it. I had to outsource a lot, not just locally, especially with working with Avis and Young. I was working with vendors around the world. I started my company because I think there's opportunities in marketing sometimes to maybe show results, but show results that aren't always effective to your mission, your goals, your bottom line. Um, SEO is kind of the biggest uh, one for that, in my opinion. So make sure you're working with someone who knows your goals and is going to help you feed into that higher level strategy and give you the metrics that you actually need to be successful. And then a strategy is one thing, but execution is another. Um, establish smaller goals to accomplish your big ones. We all have been through those day-long strategy planning sessions, and then we get back to work the next week, and everything kind of goes back to normal. So um, if you were present at my last presentation, Trello is how I get those things done. I'd be happy to walk any of you through any of this if you have questions, but um, I hope today helped challenge the way you think about marketing. And I know we covered a lot of the back to basics, but sometimes that's kind of what we need to do to really be consistent when things change as often as they do. Um, so constantly challenge the way you're thinking about it. If you're feeling uncomfortable, that's probably a good thing because that's really where the magic happens. So I really, again, appreciate your time. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this question box here. Um, Mike Biagini, so nice of you. Um, okay, what channels should businesses focus on Okay, so his question is, what channels should businesses be focused on beyond social media and websites and are, others, are other channels dead? Um, I think this question was asked just a little bit more. Let's go back to that kind of roadway um, 
example, depending on what you're selling and what, or if it's a service or a product, um, it goes back to kind of that higher level strategy that we discussed, right? You've got to carve out the pathways that make the most sense to you, and you've got to drive traffic to that main goal. So if social media isn't necessarily the most important thing to you um, in your business, spend time really digging into, okay, what is my goal and how can we carve out different ways to kind of get there? Um, and then Nicole, when you're, uh, Nicole asked, when you're referring to interacting on social for your clients, are you interacting as yourself or as your companies? Are you interacting as Tioga or Ginny? Um, I'm doing both. Um, in the example I kind of gave before uh, speaking to Mike, um, actually uh, about his, you know, always be logoed. Um, at the beginning, when I worked at Front Street, um, Nick Banks was more the brand than the logo was, right? Um, so what we started to really understand was on our social media networks, we need to be speaking both as the company and as the owners. And then we went a step further and said, okay, now every team member needs to be involved and needs to be an advocate for this business, right? We need to kind of bring the faces out behind from the logo and start because people connect with people. So when I am talking in other networks on behalf of my companies, um, I am speaking both as the company itself and both and myself. It depends more on the question they're asking. Um, I kind of make a decision then what would make the most sense um, to do, but I, I try to balance a little bit of both. So let's see other questions. So that's all the, that's all the Q and A's, but we have a couple in chat. Um, go blue, Holly, I completely agree with you. Go blue indeed. And then, um, okay, if you are just getting started on a marketing strategy for a professional service, where would you begin? And I'm ignoring Mike's go red comment here. Um, so if you're just getting started on a marketing strategy for a professional service, where would you begin? Um, that's something that, you know, that's why people would hire me to kind of help with. So that's where we'll go back to kind of this beginning page, you know, I always start it with uh, a worksheet. It's almost kind of like an interview process. I, I ask certain questions to really try to understand the goals and intentions behind um, the company and, and their efforts and why they exist. And then we craft a plan around that to make sure that we're fulfilling the needs that the company wants to achieve, but companies exist to provide a service for other people typically, um, or other services or other businesses or other industries. So making that that um, making that making strategy is, is kind of a, a big question. So I do have a couple of books here that you can read um, and they're lined full of all of my notes, but um, read through a couple of these. It's a great kind of starting point to think about marketing in different ways. And then some of these actually have little exercises that you can do and create actually a playbook for um, your uh, strategy. I I was really lucky, again, having marketing-minded leaders in my life. Um, we went through many different strategy sessions with a lot of different facilitators. So anytime I kind of facilitate a strategy meeting, I take the best of all of the things that I've learned. So I'd really encourage you, it's a great team building experience to um, start going through some of the exercises. Patrick Lincone with the advantage, Lencioni, sorry. Um, start with why. That's kind of what we're talking about here with Simon Sinek. He has a quick video recap on this, but really good. You can see all my little tabs there, really good things to remember with marketing. Um, because a little bit more design might end, I really like the war of art for challenging the way you think about it. Um, we talked about people being a really important part of the team, so strength finders, um, understanding how to communicate with other people on your team and work with other people on your team is a really big game changer. So before you get into, okay, how is this team going to accomplish the goals, we need to make sure the team's a team. So do that in a way that's comfortable for you. And then um, these are a little bit more personal, but um, I really like, um, you know, these stories, uh, the go-giver and uh, the carpenter, John Gordon. Um, really love all of his work. So I hope a little bit of these resources help. Um, but you can look at basic marketing strategies online. It's just not going to be relevant or persistent to you necessarily. So really think about your goals, get your team together and facilitate um, a, a meeting here. We have a couple more questions coming in. So we have a couple more minutes. Okay, 
Lisa asks, with social media being pushed by many marketing companies, how do you discourage clients from putting so much effort and money into Facebook posts, for example? If their target marketing is not Facebook, and this may not be the most advantageous primary tactic for their brand, their goal may be 100 likes. However, those may not include their target markets. Yeah. So um, again, I think sometimes even though I hope everyone always has the best intentions, um, people might recommend that you do this and you have to do this and you have to do that. It all goes back to your foundational purpose of what you're trying to accomplish. Like I said, um, I've been, I, I, I've only been about a year um, to this new business that I've been running, but um, I'm not on social media because it's not relevant to me right now. I'm leaning and really investing in my existing relationships to grow my business initially. So for me, social media does not make sense right now because I do not um, I do not see the value in the time and energy it takes to do it right versus what I would get out of it by not doing it at all right now. So um, again, this these arbitrary goals, kind of like a hundred likes. If you're managing a marketing team or you know do, handling it yourself, look at look at your re, look at the different types of metrics you can track and how you can actually relate them to profitability anticipating your customers' needs and fulfilling them. Um, because that 100 likes metric, kind of to your point, like you're saying, it might just not be the most relevant thing. I see a lot of marketing directors, you know, make their marketing team kind of present, you know, monthly analytics, and we see little trends and little ticks. Every time I managed my team, I would um, have I, I bumped those meetings to quarterly, but I walked them through the first quarter and I, I walked them through, okay, this month, let's look at this. Let's see how we performed. If we didn't, let's adjust it next month. Let's try some things out and see how they um, transferred over and we'll look at it again. Um, I think it's important to kind of take long-term views, but who's controlling it should be paying attention to what's going on and shifting that approach. So I'm not sure if that actually answered your question, but um, I hope it helped. And then we have one more in the chat. I agree with Julianne. Get out of here, Mike. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, okay. I think I think that's all the questions we have, and we're actually exactly on um, at one o'clock. So I hope that was helpful. Again, I know it was a little bit some of the basics, but um, you know, sometimes that's what we need to get back to uh, doing things right. Ginny Olak, wow. Um, the, the, the nuggets I took away from today from building your brand, building your trust, and knowing your audience so you can build value, um, answering the question, who cares, right? Right. Um, something I, I wrote down also was socialize with people on social media. Mm -hmm. It's obvious, but I don't think we do that most of the time, right? So. Right. I, Appreciate you sharing that. I know Impact Hive has been around for just under a year, um, but please don't sell yourself short. You're an expert. We are so thankful you joined us today. And uh, we look forward to your next seminar because I think you already offered it. How to speak to non-marketing people. We'll talk yeah, about that sure. one for next year, okay? Okay, that right, sounds good. <laughs> and I also want to thank Cargs and Ingram um, for sponsoring us. They've been around for the last three or four years now with our Lunch and Learn series. We could not do this without them. So we really appreciate the support that Carver Ingram brings to us uh, for this programming. And on behalf of the entire staff here at the chamber, I just want to thank you, our members, for joining us today, for supporting our mission and helping us build a stronger uh, community here in Gainesville. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, all. Take Bye. care and be safe.